Marcus Iverson, Iverson Racing 727, and welcome to my blog. So, to start you off tonight, I kind of wanted to do a unboxing, which I got an unboxing of my snowmobile gear right there, and I'm super excited to um, show you guys what I got for this year. And bear with me, I do not have a tripod yet, so if anyone wants to sponsor me a tripod, I'd appreciate it a lot. But anyway, so I'm going to start off with I am sticking with Castle X this year. I run their CX200 helmet and it's normally I run the high vis because I, I mean this is my favorite color and I figured it was bright enough in the past for standards at the races so I stuck with it and I got my number put on it by Sign It. Janelle, she does a fantastic job. This helmet is really sound, pretty light. I mean, works really well, protects your head because you need a helmet that needs to protect your head. So, yep. Next up, I got my uh, brand new this year, because I'll go into depth later. I got a brand new Tech Vest by Tech Vest, and she is pretty strong, pretty sturdy. It's got a pretty good pad in the back, so you can't wreck it. Or if you get hit by impact on the back, your back's not getting smashed. Or these areas right here where your collarbone is, very important to have. You want to make sure you have a strong protection there and padding on the side for your elbows or your kind of elbow shoulder. I mean, I'm going to get elbow pads later on, like sleeves to put on my arm when it gets close to the season. And when basketball starts up, because that's what they will be, it's probably a pair of Under Armour ones. But yeah, super exciting stuff. So uh, get a knife out here and I'm going to crack open this box. Team Wisconsin, Castle X, great guys to work with. I have not once complained about them. My sales rep is really, really knowledgeable. He is extremely well and easy to get along with and helps me make sure I got the right gear and the right protection for the year. And lastly, let's get into the box. Got some cardboard and, oh, my bill. So first things first, it looks like I got the new Castle X Racer's jacket. Still in the bag. We'll take her out of this and see which way works best to take her out. Oh, down here. I'll give you guys a show of it. And I will probably stop this somewhere and edit in me with the gear all on. Super excited to have this jacket. I can't wait to get the number engraved on it, but she's just fresh out of the package and got that new jacket smell. They look really sharp. I love the stripes on the front and the bright orange so you can see your number on the back. Pretty basic. Really good top quality gear here, guys. I love it. That is really great. I can't wait to rep, rep this on the track. Super great guys to work with, Castle X. Uh, shoot. I'm gonna hang up right here. Let's see. Next up, it looks like I got my work, my pants to match the jacket. And these pants are not a whole lot of insulation, so on those colder days, you gotta really get moving to warm your body up to make sure you're ready for the race. But I, per I prefer these over my normal thick deck, my thicker Castle X pair snow pants just for the fact that you got more mobility in these and you got a better way to move and can breathe and get around so let me drop these down oops wrong one so oh yes nice bright the match the nice jacket I love the Castle X logo it's been one of my favorite things since I was a child racing kitty cats. I love Castle X gear. It's been amazing the opportunity to actually get sponsored by them. Have a really great discount and great company to work with. Coming up next, I prefer some some riders like mittens or I mean like really thin gloves for when they're on the track. But I my hands can't take it, so I run a pair of Castle X gloves, and I'm pretty sure these are the. Well, these are the mission gloves. So I wore these last year. They're pretty uh, warm and insulation really well. 
My fingers don't go numb going around the track. Strat Kona last year, it was like negative 30 and I didn't feel a thing with these gloves. It kept me warm. It kept me wanting to be on the sled and wanted to go around the track. So I'll put these back in the bag for keep everything clean for the year. As by the end of the year, they probably will be sweaty and gross and ready for a new pair next year. And these ones should be the uh, stride, I think. Oh, these are rival. Logos are stride. And these are the rival gloves, and these are a new product for this year that I wanted to try out just to see. They're a little bit better of leather and stronger gloves for things, so I don't know, like they shouldn't wreck and stuff. and better grip than everything, that's the main thing when you're on the bar is just to compare. I wanted to try them out and see. Because this year I am also doing a cross country lake race place and I would kind of figure these might be a better glove for gripping on the bars when you're coming in the corners really hot and going out of them really quickly and invite everybody. Oh yes. Now this, this is what I'm hoping to wear underneath my helmet for the year, is a nice uh, face mask with a, a fog, fog deflector inside of it, built in. Hopefully she helps keep the fog off my goggles and I can don't have to run the tape on the helmet that, as much. That's what the, that's what the um, duct tape is for on my helmet. I wear that to deflect the fog off my helmet, so. Yeah, that's why there's duct tape on the front to help with goggles and keep everything from freezing up when you're going around. Lastly, for the trail riding this year, I figured I'd get the nice plaid Castle X. I love plaid. I love the darker colors and just looks really good with the logo on there and she actually looks really clean. I like that fresh. Very nice. Lastly, I think, ooh, I got a couple more things. I got this uh, fall jacket. This is a rep castle when I travel because I don't like wearing heavy jackets in the cars to go places and, and that's all I have in the winter time but this is like a mid layer, it's a lot lighter. It's a really nice dinner jacket. I can't wait to try her on and see how she works and everything. Oh, nice felt inside. I like this jacket. Great feel. Super excited. Yeah, I'll wear that to work tomorrow. Just to break her in. Oop. I got my girlfriend a present. Her birthday was last week and it kind of came in a little late, but that's all right. So I came in and then I got a t shirt, the rep after races for Castle. I didn't get much gear last year for the after races or the banquets and. I figure I might as well wrap them at the banquets with a nice t-shirt to get some pictures if I win trophies in. And lastly, I upgraded my duffel bag to the Castle X gear bag to hopefully haul everything around in. Oh yeah, nice big old duffel bag with Castle X logo on her and really deep, holy smokes. A lot bigger than what I was expecting. Aha. Very nice castle. I like it a lot. That's a very nice big duffel bag with their logo on it. Can't wait to pack a full of gear, have everything organized when I go to the racetracks. That helps speed up the day a lot better when you're nice and organized at the racetrack. And you know what you need to do and get it on and get on the hot laps because you don't have a, much time to get on the sled and get hot laps. You gotta make sure you get it warmed up and Make sure you get on the track to get your laps in. And lastly, I uh, I normally run, ran FXR team boots, but those boots were also, I think, I when I talked to up more sports, they were like six years or seven years old when they last made them, F FXR. So this year I talked to my rep for Castle and I decided to not go with them for boots this year just for the main factor of, I like, wanted a stiffer boot. And I also wanted one that I could wear when I go like if I race one, if I go to a race in the night, after the race, if I got enough time, I can hop on one of my other sleds and go trail riding on the trails in Minnesota or North Dakota. And I just wanted a warmer boot because most guys wear work boots and they're not really that warm. They're really great insulation. So I chose an F509 boot. 
it's got the dual bullet system. I really, really actually really love this bullet system. It makes fastening up your boots super easy and super quick. You just pop it in, pop it out, and it comes out. It makes it a lot easier to speed up the practice of getting dressed at the track and more efficient. That's a lot of key is getting efficiency up on making sure you're getting things done fast so you can get on the hot laps and make sure your sled's all right. And if you haven't acted something wrong in the morning, well then you're kind of screwed. You gotta fix it right away. So at least get your hot laps in, spend more time doing that and make sure that everything's functioning perfect, perfectly and you're ready to go around the track. And lastly, I'll go grab what I, a couple more things on my other tool gear bag that I have. Another thing I do is I wear, I run castless goggles when I'm on. And lastly, one of the most, another most important protection piece is your knee pads, which I wear Fox knee pads when I'm on the track. I have, I try to have some of the best of the best protection, like just so my body is priceless. A race is not worth my body. Is how I look at this when I go in the race. In every race, I look at be smart, be safe. No race is worth the body, especially when you're racing for trophies. But mod, I try mod. You gotta remember that in the end, you're racing for points, and in the series, you want to try to make as many races as you can and get as many points as you want. So, but last year, about May 14th. I think it was, I learned a pretty hard lesson about safety and wearing, being safe with your body and being smart on a snowmobile. It was me and my cousin, we went for a nice trail ride and I thought I was going to have a fun day because I have, I've had a bad week so I usually use my snowmobiles as a stress reliever because I don't do other things so I went on a snowmobile and we went two miles from my yard and we weren't heading towards our cabin in the woods and I was on my 2018 IQR and it was one of those days where you just see white out and you see it looks like it's all flat when there's small ice pockets and ice drifts so I was getting runner and going on the trail and we turned off the trail heading towards the cabin and I throttled up to get up to speed to keep going on and my skis were off the ground, but I wasn't doing like a purpose wheelie or anything like that. And next thing I know, I have a dream where we're at the cabin and everything's fine, but I wake up in an ambulance. I suffered a broken collarbone, really high sprained ankle that is finally after half a year, or over half a year now is finally back to normal. Major concussion. I uh, ripped up my boots. My FXR team boots, I sliced them in half, but they didn't. They saved my ankle from a broken ankle. If I would have been wearing like my normal, like outside, just like walking snow boots, like what you could get at like a tractor supply or shields, like the cheaper, just normal snow boots. If I wouldn't weren't wearing those ones, I probably would not be having a foot abbey. Probably would be having a fused ankle. I was not wearing my chest protector. I was not wearing my knee pads. And I really regret that decision to this day that I should have had on my chest protector, even though I don't know if it would have helped me much. My snowmobile, um, as far as I could tell, because I was in so much pain when I got back home, I didn't look it over that much. I was kind of like, let's just get rid of it because I don't think it's even worth doing it next year again. I don't want to waste my body because 
I love ice removal racing. I love doing that. And I feel that's a lot safer. So I got rid of the IQR. I mean, it's just an R, 600. I was told by the buyer when he looked over, he found out that the drive shaft got bent, apparently, is what one thing I was told. And the track was kind of ripped up, but I don't know. So the from my cousin's report, I got flipped over the handlebars and thrown in front of the sled. I know I got some of it ran over my body, but after that I was knocked out, so I don't remember. And the main reason why I am upgrading my Castle X clothing, I'll go grab one thing I'm gonna This was last year's jacket, had my name and number on it. Looks pretty good from the back, but in the front, they had to cut it off of me because I was not movable and I was in so much pain. This scissors even sliced the zipper open. So I was really impressed by the Castle X gear that it actually held up really, really well and didn't rip that much. So I was really impressed to go with them again, but I... I'm going to keep this as a symbol and a reminder to always not go out without your protection. Always wear your protection. Always use your protection. And make sure you stay safe out there because it is worth having your life saved by having the proper gear. So that's why this year I went out and spent the extra money on a tech vest and I wanted to be safe and smart this year. So yeah, that's the kind of gifs of that and I mean. I haven't talked too much about it. I, my body is still finally healing up from it. I have a pretty snazzy scar right there from the surgery. I have a plate holding my collarbone together. My right arm is still very weak. I feel that every day at work. And my parents are really anxious about me getting back on the sled, but it's what I love doing. I mean, I kind of like have this, I'm at that point where I'm like, okay, I need to keep doing this, otherwise if I stop, it's just going to kill me, because I love going out on the track. I love seeing my friends every weekend, I love doing that, that's the way I get out and have fun, and I just really enjoy it. So I have that craving for speed, and I just can't get away from it. And so yeah, so just to that, and then, and this year I am attending, or planning to attend 10 races. I am for sure going to make all the CMPRs for points, but these are for sure races that I plan to attend to. That I'll go through and I'll announce if they're ones that I might not go to. But first things first, December 10th through the 11th is Canadian Power Fogging up in Bon Jour, Manitoba. And I am extremely excited to actually go up there finally. My mom has always said it when we were racing kitty cats that she's always wanted to bring us up there and go to the races, but we kind of retired or stopped racing when we finally decided that maybe we should but we never did so that's something that's kind of been on my bucket list to always go up to the big half mile track it's only two and two almost two hours not even that from my house so i figured that's a really close race that when the border opened up which it just did last weekend super or two weekends ago now it's super exciting to have that open and finally be able to go up there and see the canadian racers that i've not ever raced against before and kind of excited to go up there and run against them on the 340 super mod I am debating if the Dangerous Deer will make it up there yet. I am not sure how it's going to run up there and it has issues on speed and keeping up with everybody. <laughs> I can ha It handles amazingly but when I can't keep up to them it's just hard to not do it right. So I'm not sure I've been tr got it all apart to do some different things to it and so that's where we're at there. December 17th and 18th. I'll be doing the Gerald Dar Hall Memorial Pine Lake 200 Snowmobile Race Pinehurst or Pine Lake, Minnesota. I'm super excited about that one. That is actually not an oval race. It will be a kind of like a tournament of drivers of a team that I'm putting together and looking for a third driver, but I have two I have two drivers for sure that we will be running on and super excited to get out there on my 1997 ZR 440. I picked up this sled and 
she sounds really strong so I just been making sure make, want to make sure she finishes the race so I sent off and got shocks rebuilt they're getting rebuilt as we speak right now my suspension is all tore apart on the rear for skid all new bearings and everything this sled is going to be ready to go I mean I kind of want to keep cost down with it but I also want to have a nice sled to make sure it's really reliable and it'll be ready to go my next race will be the uh, will be Eagle River, January 12th through the 15th. We are planning to go back to Eagle River on the 340 Super Mod to try to do better in the final. I was extremely excited and really shocked to make the 340 Super Mod Friday, final on Friday Night Thunder. I mean Friday Night Lightning. It was a really great show and a lot of fun racing, and I can't believe I was able to keep up in the path that boosted my confidence crazy going on into the last year season I was excited to get out there and second year and ready to prove what I can do and I have yet to bring home a W a uh, first place trophy first place on that mod and I have goals to reach that this year as soon as possible I'm ready my next race which isn't maybe but I plan to go to January 21st to CMPR Spicer, Minnesota, and that will be with the John Deere, for sure. And the 340 Super Mod, if allowed. But it's currently not sure if it's a points race or not, so I don't think it will might not be there, but I'm not sure sure. Uh, you can always look at my Facebook status or the online to see if the sled will be there or not. January 28th is CMPR Sox Center. Sox Center was always been like a nice favorite track. It's kind of usually a little bit smaller oval, but they usually do a pretty good show there. And there's usually quite a, last year there was a pretty good crowd there considering the track size and everything. I was pretty impressed by how many people were actually out there watching us go around. And I just ran the John Deere there last year and I'm excited to bring the John Deere and the mod out there and compete with the guys there. Next up is Butterfield, which is on the south end of Minnesota, almost by Iowa. And that's a haul from up here in North Dakota, but I'm extremely excited to go out there. I've heard rumors of big payouts that race, and it's going to be wild. There's going to be drivers ready to compete and show off what they can do with the sleds and bring home the paycheck. That's what they, their goal is. So I'm excited to see what the payouts are, and hopefully there's something working our way that day when we're out there. Strat Kona is February 11th and that is a really close to home race. I am extremely excited for that one. That is my favorite track to race on by far. They usually do a good job there at keeping the track up and nice shape. And last year it's always been a little bit cold but actually I could have a new track this year at Bon Jour as a favorite, but Strancona is pretty good. I love going there. It's nice and local. It's raced there many times on Kitty Cats, and I've raced there a couple of times now. First year was on the Enticer, and I think I finished fourth in my heat there that first year racing. It kind of got me into this hobby, and super excited to have a close track. I hope I can get more local people out there to watch me go around the track. Hopefully, I have family and friends that show up. I can't wait for that. Uh, next one will be Race on Trace, which is kind of by St. Cloud area, Alexandria kind of in the middle there, and that's always a good track because they usually have drag racing right out across there, so if you want to check that out, that's a really good show. You can go back and forth between the Volvo sleds and the watch the big mod modified drag sleds go down and try to break world record speeds. And then CMPR's points final race will be the Detroit Lakes race, which I am super excited for. That's another really fun track where it's a great race and that's when the stakes are at the highest for the points in the year and you feel the pressure that you need to be out there and make sure your sled's in tip top shape and ready to go and compete against the other guys. And lastly, I'll close out my season at the March 4th through the 5th, the Canadian Power Toboggan Final in Bon Jujur, Manitoba, which super excited to go back there hopefully for the end of the year and compete up there i can't wait to get up there and see uh, see what happens with this 340 super mod and super excited to get up there and have some fun but you know racing is it's a blast it's lots of headaches lots of time in the shop 
I spent most of my time last year in my trailer in Wapleton and I had fixes where just to get by on the sleds to make sure they were runnable just to make the show every weekend and it was always a blast to do it and I'm excited to do it at home and hopefully I can have things a little bit better prepared and a lot better running wise at home when I have all the tools and all the supplies I need and I'm excited to hopefully have a great year and I can show you quick about the sleds and show you some other projects I have going on in the shop so so here we have a 1973 Lynx that I've been building up and I'm not sure if it's going to be an oval sled or if it's just going to be a nice show sled but I've been working on polishing her up and got the motor rebuilt back there behind the car that's my dad's nice and Paul or uh, Pontiac Silver Streak that he's had for many years in a family and it's an heirloom but yeah here's the uh, my favorite second favorite sled to run of all time is the Dangerous Deer she's currently in hibernation mode right now got her tore apart waiting on some parts there but I just picked up a pair of Hilton's on her and I will say they fit her pretty good and really glad that I got them for the year and this sled <laughs> It was not supposed to be in the video, but I've been super busy with harvest lasting in October now. It's kind of been crazy, but this one I'm just stripping down for parts and you'll see her on Facebook or maybe in an auction sale in a couple months, but yep, keeping the hood though, that's mine. Here she is, a ZR440, kind of Arty Cats, prime of, the t prime of racing days when they had the we're winning on everything against the competition with her and I picked her up pretty reasonable I thought and thought you know what let's take her to a cross country race and then I can have a pretty cool trail sled that personally I love these older sleds a lot better it's been what I grew up on I grew up on a Z440 so we'll see how, how much difference the ZR is super excited to hit the trails with her and have some speed can't wait and that's about it for oh, oh there's my suspension getting all tore apart and waiting for parts to show up for her and yeah so this is kind of where the magic happens it looks like a chaotic mess right now i just opened up a bunch of boxes but can't wait to get this shined up and get everything put away for the year so please thank you thank you so much for watching my videos I hope you enjoy and also if anyone is seeing these videos and they thinking hey they want to get involved somehow and I could always looking for sponsors and looking for people to help support me I best thing is to have great people behind you like Castle X and Woody's Tractions are the only two I had signed on for this year and I'm always looking and if you have anybody or think hey maybe it'd be nice to help this guy out or any any promotions or anything I'm willing to do and I can do videos I can do Facebook posts I can come meet I can do anything I mean I'm willing to do anything so just reach out or if I have a couple in mind I might reach out to them in the coming weeks and but oh yeah here's your last scan of the shop and everything kind of messy but that's how it is when you're working on the slide sometimes you just got to get going and a couple projects at a time <laughs> Usually you do one sled, but I guess I'm doing three at the same time, so <laughs> we'll get them going for the racetrack. So, y'all have a good night. Thank you so much, and God and bless. On the trails, I love having a pair of uh, tinted ones for the track when the sun comes up or when it's night out or getting close to getting dark or when the sun's kind of like on a cloudy, gloomy day where you can't really see the ice good. Clear goggles are the way to go. I like wearing that on the track and making sure you can see good. racer 727 i'm gonna end my video tonight on all the castle x gear re review and everything else going on as you can see this face is actually baby face and i am 
amazed I'm doing this YouTube, but I want to wrap up my video not everything's here that I ordered. So last thing that I wanted to show off was this beautiful Castle XCX200 helmet with the heated shield. With It has a nice visor that goes up and down. And then also, bear with me, a screen that comes down too. Looks like that. I haven't took the peeling off of her yet. Super excited. It's got a nice breath box on the inside. Looks really sharp. I'm gonna. There. Got the cool colors green and gray. High quality helmet. Can't wait to try out on the trail. Maybe mid season I'll do a review on how I like in this helmet. And thank you guys for watching my video. I hope you guys have a great preseason to season into snowmobiling this winter. And I'm extremely excited to get back on the racetrack and show off what I can do this year. Thank you. Always got to thank my sponsors, Castle X and Woody's Traction right now. Currently looking for more. Um, thank you to Tony Autumn for the great opportunity to run his Super Mod 340 again. I'm super excited to get back on that sled. Um, my parents always for helping me out, and if I need a hand, they come. Dad usually comes out here and help me. Super excited.